I greet you all in the precious, wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, who is our Lord and He who has given us yet another day today. Our sign language interpreter again this morning is our sister Rosalind, and we welcome you to our morning devotion today. Our topic today, understanding idolatry. And the scripture reading, Exodus 20, reading from verse number 1. Exodus 20 from verse 1. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourselves an image in the form of anything heaven above, all on the earth beneath, all in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of their parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. This is the word of the Lord. God called Abraham from the land of Mesopotamia, from idol-worshipping community. He chose Abraham, and he chose him to start a nation through him. Abraham lived among the Canaanites, people who had allegiance to idols. But Abraham was not influenced by them. He never lost touch with God who called him even among the Canaanites. That's why, for example, when his son Isaac was to marry, he sent his servant to his own people to fetch a wife for him. He had no touch all connection with idols. An idol is a graven image that is revered. However, idolatry is actually the worship of idols. God does not share his glory with men. He is jealous. That's what the scripture has told us. There can't be God and another. With God, we neither add nor subtract. God is complete. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. God is complete. In Exodus 32, reading from verse 27 all the way to 29, we see God punishing the children of Israel because of diverting their attention and allegiance from him to a golden image of a calf. And in that passage, verse 27 
of Exodus 32, the wrath of God swept across the camp of Israel and 3,000 men were put to death. God does not share his glory with anyone or anything. A mountain cannot replace God. No image can replace God. God wants us to worship him in truth. And truth is not domiciled in images and idols. Truth is domiciled in him. Idol worship reduces God from being the porter, that is the creator, to the port, the created. However, idols are non-issues to God. God is not bothered by the idols, but he is concerned when he sees his people pressing their loyalty to idols. It bothers God. When we read Isaiah 44, from verse 16, following, following, up to 19, for the purposes of the context, God is raising a question through Isaiah to the nation of Israel. You go to the forest, you cut a piece of wood, half of it, you carve an image, half of it, you burn in the fire and boil your meal. How can you cook with your own God? It's a polite way of God telling Israel a piece of wood cannot produce a God and at the same time produce fuel for your food. That is not possible. You are fooling yourself. Habakkuk 2, verse 18, Habakkuk also raises a similar question. Of what value is the idol? He's asking the nation of Israel. What is the idol doing for you? The idol comes to deceive. God cannot be replaced. But man, unfortunately, has replaced God with so many idols. I can only allude to a few. Money, for example. Loving money more than God. Career and business. My work, my business, taking the praise of God. It can't work. Remember this. It is God who has blessed your hands with money. It is God who has blessed you with a career, with a talent, with a skill, how can it take the praise of God? It can't work. Nothing elevated above God by man can take the place of God. It's only that man 
is paining himself. Therefore, God wants us to put our hope and trust in him. To forget about everything else. All that is surrounding us. No created or made image can scare God. He shares not his glory. Our regions, our focus, our worship, our adoration is to God. Sometimes musicians can sing a love song to an imaginary lady and shower her with all manner of praises, but it is all based on imaginations. There is no reality. God is not an imagination. When I say I love the Lord, it is a reality. But when I say I love or hate on the basis of imagination, that remains fiction, not a fact. May God help us to worship him this day in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.